Despite previously touring with Adam Lambert as part of Queen, Brian May can't shake the feeling that fans might reject an album with his vocals on it. Believing that they could struggle to accept him as Freddie Mercury's replacement, he admitted, in a blow to Adam, that the project could only happen if it was extraordinary. If I'm honest, I have an underlying feeling that people want to hear Freddie's voice on a record when it's got the name Queen on it and it's hard for them to see it any other way, he mused to NME. Unless it jumps out and is extraordinary, then we're not going to do it. In fact, he has become so conscious of the late Freddie's legacy and his reputation among some as irreplaceable that he now ponders whether it's Adam's own songs that work better for the band. Whenever we've included Adam's solo songs into the Queen Live set, it comes out pretty good, so maybe that's a sign that we should be trying harder to see where recording goes, he explained. Although the live sets with Adam have been wonderful for him, they have struggled to find a creative spark in the recording studio. Though they booked a studio halfway through the last US tour, the Don't Stop Me Now star admitted, he didn't feel anything was quite right. However, to borrow a few words from their hit songs, while they might not have been having a good time trying to live up to Freddie's status as a champion, the on-stage chemistry remains excellent in the current lineup. Meanwhile, Brian has also opened up on the passionate arguments that could take place in the group's younger years. He has joked that every time they produced a new album, the pressures and strains meant someone always ended up temporarily leaving the group. If we didn't agree, we'd be very open and destructive to each other, he explained, and we were capable of tearing each other apart much worse than any journalist was able to. Meanwhile, although getting together with Adam Lambert in the recording studio might not quite hit the spot for Brian, he does have an unresolved wish to collaborate with ex-Beatles bassist and vocalist Paul McCartney, and has not shy about admitting it. Declaring that the Beatles have always been like the Bible to him, he confessed that collaborating with Paul was still at the top of his list. The group once had a standing joke that every time they heard the phone, it was Paul McCartney seeking them out, and they'd jokingly instruct each other to tell him to FK off. Not any disrespect to Paul, he laughed, but, just a bravado thing because he's like the Pope. Years later, Paul finally did call, to wish them luck as they embarked on their Freddie Mercury tribute concert in London, back in 1992, although, poignantly, Freddie hadn't lived to see their wishes come true. It was a difficult era in Brian's life, losing both Freddie and his father to death, and his marriage being on the brink of breaking up. He confessed that he was struggling not to fall apart, but added that recording the album back to the light, including songs like Too Much Love Can Kill You, had helped him through. Today, the worst of the dark days seem far behind Brian and, after successfully beating coronavirus, he is looking forward to performing on further tours in the years to come.